in this learning event that we are going to do very, very regularly now. Um, starting off now, uh, the focus here is always going to be around building up future skills. How ready are you with the future? How ready are we with the, you know, being a part of the future workforce? Technology is changing, people are changing, a lot of things are changing. Are we ready? And that's the essential question. And if you're not, then get ready because the time is now to get ready. Right. So you need to learn these skills and that's what we are trying to do. So oh, um, Amitesh is here today uh, where he is an expert on blockchain. Blockchain is one of the most important future skills. He's been building Flowcard. Uh, he also builds, has been co-building businesses to build the future talent. And that's the value he brings on board. More about him is best from him. So over to you, Amitesh. And uh, Go ahead and add value to whatever we have decided to discuss today. Thank you. So please confirm once screen is visible. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. One second, I just just cool. So yes, we continue to build value and I'm mindful of the time. And one of the intent of learning event as Riti rightly pointed was to uh, support the campaign and intent of uh, where knowledge is free. And uh, that's the whole idea. And uh, that's where uh, we are actually going to ensure that anything that we can understand, learn, evolve is exactly going to be made accessible and available. Uh, blockchain plays a very important and pivotal role in the whole mindset and in the idea. Because end of the day, somebody decided to uh, invent something interesting and give it back to the world. Uh, and, and then there was uh, an, an, a rationale behind it. And the rationale was to uh, break those conditioning barriers that exist in our mind that, okay, the certain things have to be done in a certain way. And therefore, we have been doing this thing this way for a certain amount of time. We'll have to keep continuing doing it in the same way. So breaking those barriers is, is the one of the most important part uh, of anything. And education uh, was primarily conceived with that intent and idea to bring a lot of uh, uh, advantages uh, society, to the people, individual society and communities at large. And of course, uh, it's, it's not that education as a mantra has overlooked. I mean, rather it has also emerged and evolved with the asks and the need. So blockchain is a story uh, of our society. It's a story of how uh, things emerge. And it's also a sort of an harbinger of how things would look like 10 years from now. So the success of blockchain is not seeded only in the technology or not just seeded in the impact that it creates among the communities and the society or now the political boundaries of the countries at large. And then there is a reason and a rationale why even uh, countries and the government have to discuss this in their respective parliaments or they have to look into policy making procedures uh, just specific i mean it's it's been a while that a technology comes into the access of hands of people and government actually have to step up to really do something about it in a in a nice way so of course uh, uh, like all technology like all development there are multiple perspective and context on which it can be utilized blockchain for us is a journey which is more in terms of trying to impact lives of people make a meaningful contribution a learning event with skill wise is one such step forward where whatever we have gained, whatever we have learned and whatever we keep continue to learn as a part of this journey, we start sharing and we keep sharing with it. Of course, uh, the make million part uh, is put into a bracket because that seems to be a point of attraction for many. And that's where uh, people get interested even in the skills. And that's true because when we started our career, at least I, as I mean, Riti and I, we started career on, almost on the same day. So when we started, we also had an intent and idea to build a very successful career. And one important parameter uh, of building a successful career was to have enough money, not to be able to think of uh, where exactly the next 10 liters of petrol is going to come from, or how do I pay my mobile bill by the end of the month, or what happens if my prepaid recharge gets over. So we really wanted to get beyond those basic needs and necessities of our life. So when we start off a career, we, of course, think of a money in a certain way because that's a gratification and a reward that comes in as a part of building a successful career. Blockchain, on the other hand, is something beyond and which is where a value exchange is an important bit of it. So I'm going to be very clear about certain things. I mean, so this learning event is going to be around 
four aspects. So this is just first of the series, and it is just to set the expectations on how and what uh, things are going to be. So it is it is going to be more about uh, experiences. So we are going to uh, bring in a lot of these experiences uh, among the technical practitioners, among the academic practitioners, among the business, uh, among enterprise individuals. So most of these uh, experiences are going to be together. So we'll see these events where we'll have individuals and people coming in talking about specific areas. So I'll give you a, a perspective. So for example, Ethereum, or uh, let's say uh, these days we have a trend called NFTs. Now non-fungible tokens is something which is, is a very, very simple concept. But at the same time, people are going ha ha about it. I mean, because they really want to do something big with it because they think it's a big thing. It is actually in a way, but you really need to understand and balance those experiences. So the, the, from the team side, there'll be uh, people who will come with a business background and explain how NFT can be done. There'll be people on the technical side who will say that, okay, if you want to publish your first NFT, how you can go about it. Or if you want to bring and build your own NFT platform, what are the ways that you can go about? So there are basics uh, that really need to be cleared out before you can actually get to those advanced level of learning. So these experiences, uh, and in fact, it's not that we know it all. I mean, we are also in pro process of working with different customers, projects, and markets, and we also learn and evolve. And what is super interesting that everything that we see in blockchain today was non-existent even a year ago. So, I mean, for example, OpenSea was just a small project when it started, but it's one of the leading NFT platforms today. Now, on the same on the similar levels, there are many such platforms which have popped up. So it's, it's going to be bringing those experiences together. At the same time, uh, knowing technology is key. Education is important. And, uh, and, and we are all, I mean, so this, this is another interesting experiences that we are having while trying to bootstrap talent at different places in Ranchi, Bangalore, uh, Dubai, and Calcutta. And we are experiencing that all of us have a different knack. I mean, for example, someone who's really good with coding may or may not be good with a use case development or maybe a requirement understanding or communication for that matter. So, and then again, it's not that blockchain is a tech thing and anything tech and once you've learned tech, it is going to solve all the problem. No, like any other uh, technology platform, communication is a key. Uh, understanding the requirement is super duper important and also translating those requirement and working with different team member is, is very, very important to make things happen. So it does give a feel in a certain way that it's an open source project. And as an individual, if you learn certain skills and if you are educated with a certain background, with certain amount of experience, everything will fall into a platter, but it is not. End of the day, it's also like any other technology project or a solution, you need a teamwork to happen because it's little too complex from that standpoint. And the fourth part is where, uh, I mean, contributing to communities is, is going to be critical because that's how you're going to learn fast and super fast. So I'm a tech entrepreneur and I've been there for a while now uh, and passionate about technology right from my education day. So I'm educated in technology and IT and uh, been working in building and bootstrapping team globally. And, uh, and, and that's my passion. So I believe that uh, serving customer or building product or building services is not where my interests lie. My interests lie in working with people, trying to understand what we can do to make things better for him or her. And how do we create that aspirations among them and, and work with them to achieve and find whatever way they define success in a certain way. So right now I'm building and I'm really busy bridging this skill gap uh, because all the vision or the great vision that I have be it with Flowcard or many other IPs that we have, we need a right kind of team and talent to execute. And if all of the technologies that we are trying to work on are emerging and evolving technologies, we really don't get people from the market. And it's no, uh, I mean, and it's, it's a clear fact that when you're working in markets like Bangalore, I mean, the devs ask anywhere between 25 to 30 lakh as a salary, which in my opinion is like uh, haywired at many, many levels. I mean, there's no harm in paying people what they expect or what they want or what they deserve. But creating value out of that is where things are going to go a little funny. And, and that's what's happening with the market right now. So, I mean, and that's where we need to really solve the uh, actual issues at the core. And which is where our association and partnership with Skillwise comes in at a very, very critical juncture. So we are trying to solve the problem fundamentally and not just trying to fix the, uh, or just trying to find uh, asymptomatic solutions over a period of time. So, 
there is absolutely no way home and i've taken this example keeping in mind uh, the next generation that you are going to engage with so it's a interesting movie in no way home where which talks about multiverse and you actually have spider mans from different universe coming together to try solve a problem in the current reality and uh, in 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 a nutshell uh, uh, the movie is a reflection of uh, exactly what's happening in the minds of people at least so so we are we have to build ourselves onto a different uh, genre all at the same time we'll have to get into the acceptance of understanding on the fact that the the problems may look similar but when that problem is propagated onto a different context it can have a completely different outcome so in in a simple in a simplified terms we really need to work with a very diversified audience and base and that's the critical part of it and in and blockchain is uh, is very similar to that i mean you really don't uh, have to uh, go through that rigorous process i mean when we were trained uh, early in our career there were these courses where you learn sql basics then you learn let's say atl com you learn front end you learn asp.net and and these were all building courses which means that if you have to i mean if i need to be a, de a complete developer i need to go through all these uh, paradigm of 90 days of training before i can actually be put onto the project but now things have changed because uh, what you know as even as a simple small skill i mean that could be enough to start contributing to a project and that can happen if you have an expert guidance uh, as a mentor or as a coach in the process and they are the ones who can actually guide you through into the journey in the similar way uh, the programs that we are trying to build around learning event and skill wise is focused around coaching and uh, blockchain being one of the first areas where we are simplifying the whole process so the time is now i mean uh, uh, what you have to do is you can start right now at this point in time uh, understand and establish the basics uh, i mean first first and foremost blockchain is not a complex technology it is not something i mean in my opinion uh, the technology is not novel i mean everything every single thing within the blockchain if you break the technology into smaller parts like mission impossible movie i mean you will see everything existed forever it's just that someone has put everything together in a form of a solution and they have i mean and of course when you solve one problem you unlock another problem and it is all well integrated so in the blockchain as a space it looks massive but at the same time it's a very well matured connected um, computer science solution at, at some point in time so you might not have to go back down to all the basic but at least establish some form of basic and stay focused on to a goal of building your first application or dap as as it is called in a blockchain world so dap is nothing but a decentralized application and i mean i i would rather want to have another learning event between centralization and decentralization but in in a general sense understand that the rbi prints all the money in india it's a central way where money gets printed and distributed to uh, atms in the decentralized world there won't be an rbi and we decide our own money and we uh, do an exchange with the value that we want among among uh, uh, others so at a very high level let's assume decentralization to be that so there are so again i mean if you have the central most uh, uh, system let's say if you book an uh, food on zomato and you make a payment through a credit card or a debit card or a upi so the amount gets deducted from your bank account and it goes back to the uh, seller or to zomato in this example but in a decentralized world when you have a no central bank account and you have to make an exchange or you have to pay zomato i mean then zomato needs to be super sure that okay this is a money of value and uh, and if there is no authority from government of india or any other government whether or not that money is further tradable or not so so blockchain offers us the complete mechanism of solving this problem so most of these application who follow which follow this decentralization as a principle have certain strict rules to follow so these are some of the basic understanding that needs to be established when you need to start so which is where uh, and 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 one of the classic conversations that i have heard in last few years that what is blockchain blockchain is a glorified sql server or a glorified database i mean end of the day you stored uh, data and any other uh, database store data i mean the person is right yes blockchain also stores data but it is little more than that blockchain stores transaction and it brings an integrity on all transaction so end of the day data storage is a fundamental behavior of any any process i mean even in our minds we have our memories we store data i mean you remember your fondest memories you remember worst of your memories i mean why why do you remember that because memory is fundamental to nature 
so so database is fundamental or storage is fundamental to blockchain as well so it is not about just having a database or a memory it is a little beyond that beyond than that and which is where understanding blockchain from a transaction model is very very important and critical so between now and 90 days the, the journey looks like understanding and establishing the basic to understanding the ecosystem and that's another interesting bit thanks to crypto wave and people becoming crypto millionaires and billionaires now there are number of blockchains that exist so there are solana there is i mean dogecoin and and you name it and you have it and then there are more than 500 odd coins and then all of these coins have their own blockchain or they use some of the existing blockchain so from a norm, normal standpoint you actually you you get confused that where do you want to start and how so and then therefore it gets complicated to understand the ecosystem because you really don't know how that coin is generated at the first place so understanding an ecosystem and becoming an expert in one or two of it is the most important bit because fundamentally most of the blockchain follow certain rules. I mean, for example, we all dress up to go to office. I mean, nobody asked us to do that. That's a rule or a condition that we have grown up with. In the same way, all blockchain dress up to a certain static fixed rules. It's just that the way those rules are implemented could vary from time to time from one blockchain to another. So between now and 90 days, you actually, and that's an enough time for you to stay comfortable or get comfortable with one or two ecosystem and work through it and you'll certainly start to exhibit some sign of expertise on the blockchain space now uh, learning to market is very very critical in the blockchain world because what has happened with the evolution from centralized application to decentralized application time to build a product and time to validate and market it has reduced significantly and nft is a classic example trust me nft is not a new concept or tokenization is not a new concept prior to nft there used to be an era of icos initial coin offerings and I mean, it was also a tokenization process. Of course, there are subtle difference between the way NFTs are done and ICOs were done. But end of the day, from a technical standpoint, there is no, no net new technology that had to be created to build, I mean, to flavor it from an ICO to NFT. So fundamentally, one of the reason why NFT is getting flooded because the expertise and skills were always available. It was just a matter of time. People understood what market expect and they repackaged themselves into a certain way. So, so it, it is all about uh, learning to market and understanding market. So let's say even if you are learning an ecosystem, it's so easy to get confused. I mean, if you have a research bent of mind, you might get stuck with one interesting uh, computer science problem. It may be a heuristic and it could have multiple solution to that problem. And then you will realize that, okay, that's not an important problem to solve. So staying focused is, 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 a, is a right way forward. And the only way to achieve that is actually through learning to market and understanding market well. Trends is an interesting bit, and this is what I kind of uh, keep talking to my folks and say, you know what, and, and most of this trend observation comes from the idea of FOMO, and I mean, the fear of missing out. So just because uh, you think that uh, uh, something new has come up, it has to be good, and or maybe something suddenly shoots up in your uh, crypto value, and we think that that blockchain is going to be there forever. I think we'll have to get out of that context. I mean, um, even a, a yellow taxi in Calcutta is as equally good as any Uber or an Ola taxi. I mean, if you have a clear goal or a clear destination in mind. So you really don't have to uh, go with a fancy blockchain. I mean, there's no harm if you can pick one because your organization or you have already identified a project or a prospect. I mean, you can always pick up the blockchain. But my suggestion is pick up on Bitcoin and Ethereum because it'll cover 80% of what's happening. So Bitcoin has its own journey and Ethereum has its own journey. Within Ethereum space, you will have different, I mean, it's a very, very large blockchain. I mean, I, I think 80% is an understatement. I've just kept it because to stay and not to discount the other blockchains that exist. But within the Bitcoin Ethereum network, you're pretty much covered from the on the blockchain journey point as of today. So, and, and when you start to work on these ecosystem, you'll start to get these terms called layer one and layer two. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be layer three, four, five as well. So who defines this layer one, layer two? So there are no industry standards. So there are no organization which say, hey, you know what, this is layer one and layer two. It's just that someone who has got popular, they use this as a marketing model to start conveying that message that we are layer one solution or we are layer two solution. Of course, it exhibits certain characteristic within the blockchain. And there is also an acceptance from the audience that, okay, this sounds like a layer one or this is a logical layer two. So please do not get confused about 
these layer one and layer two scenarios. I'm pretty sure it will also evolve and emerge. And you'll the 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 key is you'll have to start contributing to the trend. I mean, you don't have to really get going on to the other side. And the easy way to do that is set your goals and targets. And one of the ways to do is set up a very simple milestones. And these milestones doesn't require any complex skills to begin with. So you can start off with the skills. I mean, if you have skills on JavaScript, and again, this Node.js, React.js, um, XJS, YJS, I mean, all of this JS is end of the day a JavaScript, which has been customized to do certain things specifically. And of course, uh, it's an important skill to have. And when you have these skills, it is actually critical to grow in this skills. I mean, I'm what I'm saying is you need to build your expertise in uh, JavaScript in an interesting way. But if you have the skill, you're all set for the milestone. I mean, you really don't need a, a certification or a degree to push you into that sort of direction. But at the same time, have a first milestone wherein you understand the fundamentals and basics of wallet. What is a wallet? How mining is done? What are these networks? How these networks work? Now, cryptography is a very fundamental understanding that is required. I mean, so, I mean, and I think cryptography should now be introduced at a school level. And because with the extent and advent of cybersecurity and everything else happening, cryptography is one of the basic fundamentals. You, you may, may or may not want to get advanced into developing those algorithms, but at least an understanding of it. Similarly, architecture, I mean, system architecture is another critical part because most of the documentation that exists in the blockchain world is very technical. So if you don't understand the fundamentals of architecture that how systems work or how technology work, I mean, you may not be able to benefit. So I think the first milestone is exactly these basic uh, understanding of things, how they work, what are the challenges that exist and which is, and, and having an a JS skill is enough for you to decrypt most of it. I mean, in a basic understanding of English and JS can actually help you sail through quite easily. The second bit is the use cases. And this is an important part because uh, most of the time when we have acquired certain skill, application of skill is the most important bit. And smart contracts and use cases go hand in hand. So for example, oil and gas industry, if you are trying to automate a finance flow, which is let's say if a, an, a procurement less than $10,000 can be done automatically without any further process, or as soon as product is re received, the payment should happen pretty automatically. That can, and that can be an easy smart contract that can be developed. So, and, and again, this, this scenario that I just explained about oil and gas is a use case. So these understanding of use case and translating the functional understanding is important. From a technical standpoint, uh, you have skills on building APIs and publishing APIs, managing APIs. I mean, it is it is very, very interesting. So we are doing this session. Um, uh, one of my uh, senior architect, Abhijit, uh, he's doing an a Azure AZ200 certification course every Saturday, uh, 10 to 11. And they're talking about building APIs and leveraging Azure to build these APIs. So, I mean, you can feel free to join those courses and the courses all which are already done is already on YouTube. And that is primarily done with an intent for uh, uh, taking you to the next level. So building those APIs is a, is a fundamental core technical skill that you'd require to solve some of the important milestones um, to achieve a, on your blockchain journey. The other interesting scenario is off, on, and side chain. So basically I've used this a parenthesis. So you'll hear, you'll hear these terminologies quite often, off chain, on chain, side chains. So these are basically done to achieve certain amount of throughput or improve a throughput or a performance on a blockchain. So there are different methods which are devised and knowing when to use what is another functional decision that has to be taken as a part of your solution. Because every time you decide on one aspect of chain, it has got a clear impact on the experience uh, on the application. Either it's a centralized application or a decentralized application. So that's another important milestone. And that's a kind of correlate to the architecture model. Similarly, which is the third and the most important milestone when you start to exhibit on the level of your expertise is about data structure. Uh, sadly, this is one of the most important concepts uh, that you need to uh, get through. I mean, uh, the basic structures on tree, queue, stack, hash maps, uh, how hashing is done, the role of extendable hashing. It's a good to have knowledge. I mean, you really don't need the skills to start building an app. But once you have these skills, you start to qualify onto an advanced level of blockchain, which is where you'll start to bring improvisation on the fundamental network itself. And that's one of the most important parts. So in the blockchain world, contribution plays a very, very pivotal role. And, and this third part is the key differentiator in your blockchain career. 
and which is where it is important. So if you have the skills and when you look back into an app, you'll realize that there are more than one ways and more than one challenges that you can do. And one classic example is Web3. So I mean, how even Web3 has emerged, the courtesy because of the fundamental data structure starts to support it. I mean, if you're offline and if you have to sync data, I mean, it, it sounds very unusual in a certain context, but in a Web3 area, in a Web3 era, I mean, a day before yesterday and yesterday, Ranchi had an internet ban, but there are ways wherein you can actually keep the network working irrespective if there's an internet ban. So, and how is that even possible? Because then you need to understand fundamentally how things work. So, which is where uh, uh, this is a third critical milestone and a very important one. Knowing technology is key. I mean, I've brought this slide because uh, most of these technologies work in together. So just having an insight and understanding of, let's say a blockchain is not going to add a lot of value. You need to understand how other pieces of technology work together. So let's say if you don't understand the role of internet in keeping blockchain network up and going, I mean, you may build in a world-class solution, but you might have missed the fundamental aspect of it. So which is where a teamwork and the level of team is important. So what are the areas that you really need to look at? So I'm, I'm not a big fan of a formal education, but I think this is something which is really, really critical for uh, success, wherein you need to understand that you need to have some form of support for the entire technology landscape. So you need to have understanding of things like cryptography, mechanism design, design and a distributed computing. So a certification and a degree helps in these contexts because these degrees are built with certain academic understanding in hindsight. So they take you from an actually 101 level and they graduate you to a level of say 105 or 106. So it's actually done in stages. And those are some of the real core building and foundation aspect, which is really needed. So if you have these understanding or certifications with you, you are already good to go. Uh, if you if you don't, I mean, it's okay. I mean, that doesn't mean that anyone anyone stops you on not achieving it. Now there are these online courses and open courses. Uh, we can always have a one-on-one -on -one session to guide you into the journey and put you through a right sort of uh, uh, MOOC courses if that is required. But there's, this is something which is one of the basic necessity. I mean, if you have the skills or if you have this education, it helps in achieving better standards. And setting the standard is the most important bit because uh, right now in the, in the world of blockchain, there is no industry or no organization who's going to say, that okay here is the standard or this is an a plus or this is an a minus and this is not going to happen so which is also good in a way because that allow you to stay uh, tuned to the fundamentals and uh, get a level of expertise in languages like java python c sharp c plus plus and js libraries i mean if you are an expert or if you're looking to build your expertise in this level trust me you are covered uh, for most of the blockchain uh, development bit of it so from a technology standpoint these are the only things that you need so and again, let's say if you don't have a degree or a certification, but you're already at exhibiting an expertise level in Java, Python, C sharp. I mean, that's brilliant. I mean, the, please do not get panicked and worried about it. Of course, uh, skills and money come together and, uh, uh, and we really need to be a jack of all trades, but trust me, we all need to be master in one. So these are some of the specific technologies based on the experiences that we had, I think is what allow you to do most of the things. I mean, if you are good in, in JavaScript, you're good with Python or a C sharp, you're good with C, C++, I think you will be able to get most of the element of it. So what is interesting in this uh, technical skill? I mean, you don't see any fancy new language. I mean, so I think the first JS is a mistake. It should be Golang, which is a language, uh, which is a newly introduced language. So Go and Golang is a language that, that should be the first one. I think it's JS by mistake. So the idea is that if you have these skills with you, I mean, most of uh, element within the blockchain is actually covered for you. And then there are certain, something called as a blockchain skills. And these are some of the things that you'll acquire while you start to work on blockchain proje projects and scenario, you'll acquire. So these crypto economic protocols, they sound like a very fancy word. And trust me, I also used to, I, I like to use this word protocol because it let me sound so cool that, okay, I've done something interesting. But fundamentally, it's a data structure implemented. So, but again, there are some very fundamental implementations that have been done across blockchain. So when you start to learn about blockchain and different blockchain ecosystem, so one of the major differentiator between one blockchain to another is these economic protocols. And it's very interesting to have that understanding of why someone chose 
to pick up one uh, protocol over another. And then they have a very detailed white paper and a rationale about it, why they have done certain things in a certain way. And it, it's filled with a lot of learning. And that's again a continuous process. So once you do it, you might arrive to a point when you're building your own product or an application, you might to invent or discover your own uh, crypto economic protocol. And that's exactly what we are trying to achieve with the flow card as well. I mean, so with the, in the journey of a flow card, I can tell you that, I mean, there is no one size fit all approach based on the market that we need to access based on the product that we're trying to build. That's an emerging solution. Tokenization is a very important skill uh, that is required in the blockchain scenario. I mean, it is about understanding how tokens would be created, how can they be propagated, how can it store value, uh, how can it be destroyed? And let's say if there's an exchange of a token with a certain value, how can you exchange those tokens over a period of time? Uh, on the other side, algorithm and computer sciences, I think this is, a, this is a core fundamental. I mean, if you have the skills, you'll only get better. So your understanding of uh, problems and you being able to uh, discover a new solution is going to be much, much faster. So these are some of the core skills. Interest, I think, is an interesting section because uh, contributing to community is more important part. And I think whatever your interests and hobbies lie, if you can align yourself uh, to it, and it, it makes fun. I mean, for example, uh, I mean, when you travel and when you meet different people, you understand different cultures. Uh, if you have an acumen for design and if you look design as one of the fundamentals of everything. So you will try to find solutions to some pressing problems at unusual places. So one of the best ways to do that is to curate personal interest and trying to map your personal interest to the professional career that you're trying to build. And it makes it engaging. Of course, it goes with one of the caveat. I mean, if you are that person that you have an X personal life and a Y professional life and you want to keep it separate, maybe this slide or maybe this part of this part may not, um, you will not be able to correlate with this. But if you're someone who's really passionate about everything in life, this can allow you to achieve something. So contributing to community is one of the most important parts. So for example, and, and that's the best way to learn in a, and, and then because it's, it's, a, it's a community of possibilities. So to give you an instance, I mean, for example, if you are a part of a mining community, if you're a part of a dev community, if you're a part of a larger ecosystem where solutions are being built, you'll always have an access to information and knowledge beforehand. And then there are people who are willing to help because they share common interest and common goal. So, but again, the point is when you want to stay active in a community, the core fundamental exists, which is you have to do a selfless contribution first before you can actually seek something out of it. So building that intent is very, very important. So anything that you're comfortable with, any blockchain that you're comfortable with, but if you can start contributing to these open source communities, that's the best way to learn. You'll always stay uh, ahead, the, ahead of the curve that's happening and you'll also feel great about it. And most of the uh, Bitcoin millennials that you see across the globe were someone who were part of these communities, either through these meetup events or they were part of coding groups or they were part of someone wherein a friend said that I need your help and the person got interested. So communities is the right way to move forward and, and, and there's a guaranteed way to be a millennial because uh, the, one of the important power of community is you might conceive a new idea which could be groundbreaking and end of and it could scale automatically without external funding or interest. And one of the spirit of community is understanding and a common shared values. So it comes out in a very, very interesting way. So Sky by Cast is a community that we are trying to contribute to and uh, all of us partner to build. I mean, it's even at an early stage, but we are looking forward to make more contributions in future. Before I end my presentation, I wanted to have an academic slide wherein I just want to give an essence to a professional, what kind of work packet does a blockchain developer or a blockchain technology people have to deal with. So you have things like you can, you participate in research or in writing white papers. So that's where, I mean, so the Bitcoin, the journey of Bitcoin started with a white paper. A white paper was put, pushed onto an internet and then it became a sensation and people started to use it and start expanding it. You, you can end up developing a lot of POCs uh, for your enterprise customer or for your existing customer or for your new business ideas, and defining these blockchain systems and analyzing usage statistics. One of the interesting problems that we solve because most of the time the blockchain transactions follow certain rules and then you have to index that information, cache that information and optimize it. So there's a lot of um, scenarios that, I mean, there are a lot of unsolved problems. I mean, it's not a finished commodity or a product yet. 
it also comes with a lot of challenges and avenues, uh, but it certainly offers massive amount of possibility. So collaboration with the team and, and going with an open mind is one of the most important bit. But trust me, most of these work packets are very, very interesting problems to solve. We are having a great time at our office in Ranchi and Bangalore solving these problems um, currently in Dubai and trying to work with uh, different individuals here and having a great time trying to even get to the market. So I'm pretty sure this is not a standard definition of work packet, but this is based on whatever experience and expertise we have built so far. I think these cover most of it. The, the packet and the nature of packet may change. Of course, you are on the business side of blockchain. Your understanding of packets will be different. It will be more focused towards um, evolving an idea. If you're from a legal background and if you're trying to look at the work packets, it is more about mapping the compliances, mapping challenges of payments, uh, if you're from the taxation background or from the compliance background, the work packets will change. So we have not reached to that point where um, we need to engage legal or accounting people in the compliances of a different government, because most of the solutions that we have done has not scaled to a level or an extent of Ethereum or blockchain yet. But what is interesting that we are seeing that early trend and we are seeing a lot of collaboration happening from a different team members. So the blockchain that we work with is a Flow blockchain and Flow blockchain is actually a fork of a blockchain called Litecoin and Litecoin is a fork of a blockchain called Bitcoin. So we are kind of um, um, uh, to, the, to the Bitcoin house of things is where we have kept and what we are trying to solve is a lot of climate action issues uh, leveraging blockchain. I mean, there are two very important numbers to know. Uh, 150 terawatts is exactly uh, the consumption of power that Bitcoin network takes, and that's not good. Similarly, Ethereum networks take far less, but still close to 40 terawatts power. So to give you a context, I mean, 150 terawatts is approximately the electricity consumption of Argentina for a year. And we are actually consuming just to keep the Bitcoin network up and going. So clearly the kind of energy that is going in in running this is not something which is very healthy for an environment from a long-term basis. But at the same time, we are trying to find ways to optimize that because there could be much more impactful values that could be created. And then there could be certain neutrality that we can certainly achieve. So that's one of the core important issues that I'm trying to work with, trying to find economic models and build economic models where we can actually optimize the consumption of electricity and truly bootstrap a very healthy green uh, world. So this brings to the end of my presentation. This is my flow card. I also request all of you to build a flow card. So when you build a flow card, you, it allows you to do a digital exchange of your information. Flow card is built in a privacy first world. So it's 100% and always your choice what information that you want to share and what you not. You can also and always share an information and take back an information. So for example, if you have scanned my card, and you have taken my phone number, I can actually choose to take the number away and it starts to, and it starts to reflect there. The most important bit of flow card is every time you sign up for a flow card, we plant a tree. Uh, there is a flip feature on the flow card, which allow you to see the tree that you that has been planted on your behalf. And when and as and when it grows, you also get to see the status. One of the effort that we are trying to work together towards right now is called as a better planet together campaign. As a part of this campaign, we are promoting and propagating an idea for every individual to plant a tree themselves as well. So when you log into Flowpad today, you'll also see a section called Planters app, and that allows you to plant a tree in whatever premise or wherever you want to, and also stay committed to the tree's survival and growth. And when you do that, and when you first plant, when you plant your first tree and tag it on on the Flowpad, you successfully start your own farm, and that and that gives you a sense of feeling of commit, commitment uh, towards an environment. So we are all committed to that. And it's an interesting conversation to have. It was a monologue from my side, but if you have questions, please shoot. Thank you, Amitesh, for that. I think uh, we were glued to what you were saying. Um, Guys, if you have any questions, KK, Ashish, Uma, Shankar, no, Narzo, Kati. Yeah. No, Riti, I'm very clear about the concept. It's quite interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've never gone through this. And uh, it's really, really interesting. Very interesting. Really so, one has to really dive deep. Yeah, so specifically, if you want to start experiencing how this whole thing works, I encourage all of you to sign up on Flowcard. 
uh, what Amitish shared at the end of it, and just just see how it works because he's explained the benefits of it. What happens once you uh, get get FlowCard onto your system, um, or once you sign up on FlowCard? So do sign up and see how it works. Experience this whole. Uh, technology that they have been working on so all of you if you can just log into flowcard and see you'll you'll uh, amitesh if you could just help uh, how people could go on to flowcard uh, yeah one second okay, okay i encourage you ma just just sign up and yeah, see yeah. how it works right sure sure sure, sure. Uh, let me share my website. So it's an interesting concept. I think uh, what we will also do, guys, is um, um, next learning event, we are going to go as per, uh, um, you know, building further skills on this. So yeah, I think Amitesh is showing this. So it's very simple. You have to go to flowcard.app, click on create flowcard. So I suggest if you have a LinkedIn profile, go with the LinkedIn because it has a better experience and then you click sign in. So once you click sign in, it's just a one step and then your first flow card would be ready. So in my case, because I already have a flow card with me, so it stays there. So once you sign in, you it picks up all the basic information. And if you're a first time sign up, it'll allow, ask you to get, say allow and stuff. And once you have done, so one second, yeah, this is a flow card. So with Flowcard, oh my God. So with Flowcard, you can actually create multiple versions of cards. So for example, this is my Flowcard, uh, which is a default one. I'm, I mean, of course, I have, have a different tagline here. So let's say I'm in Dubai and I want to change my phone number as soon as I have it. I can always change that phone number. And you have these set of features available. All my contacts and all my exchanges are visible. Uh, what is interesting is this is where the, so we have under, uh, intentionally brought under the hood features here. So this is a blockchain in action. So this is my actual uh, blockchain wallet. And as you can see, uh, I mean, it's my public wallet ID. I, of course, the private key is not visible. This is an actual cryptocurrency that I own. And this is all the transactions that have been done. And this is, we have brought in here because we want to show what exactly happens under the hood so let me just go to the one of the latest transaction and show you so so this is a public ledger so blockchain is a public ledger everything is available in public so for example this is a transaction which is done from one address to another address and while this transaction was done there was an additional data that was exchanged and that is a comment so what we have done we have built this communications or a, a crypto protocols and these protocol is basically an encrypted protocol which our systems understand and decode that information and make application work. The beauty of the solution is most of these transactions are on a public ledger in a decentralized mode, which means that we don't have to host servers to actually do these transactions. In fact, I really don't know where these transactions are. So, and and uh, then there are there is a mechanism of these confirmations. So there are already 1,000, sorry, 14,275 confirmations done on this transaction, which is again, uh, the part of a blockchain network and protocol. So in a nutshell, Flowcard has simplified the whole experience of blockchain. Uh, most of the world is working on blockchain wallet where they're trying to create a, a wallet and then add features. We have taken a reverse approach where we are staying focused on the use case and le just leveraging a uh, wallet as a part of it. So please do experience and of course, come back to us and more than happy to address most of the issues and also take feedback on the product because it's still in its in its beta stage and we are still doing pilots with larger organizations so your feedback is going to help us to make it much better than what it is awesome thanks for that Amitesh. really helpful so i think uh, um, we will, I am on flow, uh, flow card. All of us are on flow card. So those of you who are not there, just get onto it and start using it. It's very, very easy. You just need to swipe a simple swipe that, you know, uh, you do on your phone all day anyway. So, um, yeah, so uh, good. Thanks for that, Amitesh. Great session. And I think next, uh, our next session will be on Wednesday from 7 to 7.30 p.m. And uh, we will also focus, start focusing now more on, like Amitesh said, establishing the basics. So right now, today's session, you've learned uh, what, what are the skills you need. From the next session onwards, we're going to have more um, focused 
learning sessions. Um, so we'll have sessions around blockchain as well as the corporate skills you need to learn on blockchain that Amitesh spoke about. Um, so we'll uh, meet you on Wednesday, 7 to 7.30 p.m. again. And uh, yeah, so um, any questions, please go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead and ask your questions. If there are any. Hi, I'm Dish. Uh, this is Umar Shankar. Yes, Umar Shankar. How are you? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, sir. Uh, yeah. See, actually, uh, thanks for the session. Uh, it's a great session. And uh, my uh, my question is, uh, so what do you suggest for the person who is div uh, who is from not non-coding background? Like, um, it's no coding language or nothing. So how the person can change to blockchain uh, career, how he can be. Excellent. So Uma Sankar, that's a, that's a great question. And I think uh, what is, is an actual scenario of the team composition that I'm going to tell you. So most of the blockchain team that I am involved in working with, none of them are engineers. And that's the beauty of uh, blockchain. So, but what they have, they have an uncanny understanding of technology and they have amount of patience to understand how it works. So someone who doesn't have a technical background and wants to build a career on blockchain, there are many possibilities. One of the foremost possibilities to understand the economics part of it. So which fundamentally people understand mostly around mining, but that's not true. I mean, mining is one part of it, wherein you'll understand what miners do, how are they rewarded, uh, what are the different ways and trust me, even having that hindsight and knowing uh, what miners uh, as a community that they're doing and how they propagate. So they don't need to have a technical skill, but of course they need not have that fear of technology. I mean, so if, uh, if a code, uh, if a link is given to you and said that, Hey, you know what, enter your user ID password and it looks like a console. So you should not have that fear. If you don't have that fear, then you'll actually start to enjoy the process. So that's one side of things where you can actually master that skill very easily and start contributing and it's a very rewarding career over a period of time. Uh, but that could just be a part-time approach. I mean, that could be the beginning and eventually it could be a part-time approach. On the other side, uh, the wallet and the, the business side of it, which is specifically understanding of finances and understanding of economics is very, very critical. So if you have a background in that, excellent. If you not, I, that's an area that you should start exploring yourself in. And that will allow you to uh, do a lot of uh, uh, things forward. So for example, uh, a Dogecoin, a Dogecoin uh, scenario when Elon Musk tweeted uh, and value increased. So we assume that, uh, I mean, everything is going to be the positive side. But if you were someone who understand the fundamentals of how that value was increasing, you would have been very careful. And then a lot of people looking for those advices. So you can also look at that. And if there's anything specific, you can always reach out to Riti or me and we can talk one-on-one -on -one specifically in your case. Okay, okay. Thank you. Any, anyone else with any suggestions or questions? Happy to address them. Or tell us what you would like to learn for the next session on blockchain. Yeah, I, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can hear yeah. Okay, hi Amitesh, I'm sure here. So uh, my my question is more from a perspective. When we at least my when my limited knowledge, when we talk blockchain, we use Bitcoin and these as a kind of a synonymously. We think that that's the same thing. Uh, so that's one area where probably blockchain is being used. But I'm sure I've heard of use cases across industries. So I think maybe in future it will be interesting also to know that if I'm a healthcare professional or if I'm a, let's say an automotive or manufacturing professional, does it change my life or will it, or can it change my life in future? So probably if you can throw some light and maybe we'll request Riti to have a more elaborate session, maybe sometime uh, later. Oh yeah, that sounds like a plan issue. And I think one of the things that we want to do with enterprise uh, engagements that we have is exactly this. But just to tell you what we have already done leveraging blockchain, I think three scenarios. One, uh, on the healthcare side, we have uh, already built an IP uh, of managing data privacy for patients. So what happens uh, in, in the Western world where healthcare or health insurance is very matured. So typically you have to write an email uh, to your healthcare provider and then they send your uh, prescription or medical data or certain format which you can actually ship it to the other. So let's say you were getting treated in hospital A 
Now you have to visit hospital B. You have to request hospital A to give your data, then in hospital, and then you pass it on to hospital B. So there's a process which is involved right now. And at the same time, you as a patient, okay, courtesy app might have an access to your data, but you cannot, you don't have a control on your data. And most of the time, uh, insurance companies actually leverage on this data to offer you a customized or a personalized insurance, which again may or may not work very well in your favor. So one of the things that we have done is to leverage blockchain to bring an element of privacy into it and giving a complete access or control of data to the patient themselves. So the app allows you to encrypt all the information in hospital A and you make a choice whether or not hospital A can use your data. And at the same time, in case of emergency, there are emergency smart contracts which allow you to do so. So we can do an elaborative session and you can also do a demo sometime. It's an interesting piece of work that we did uh, for one of the leading health authorities in the world. Second was uh, doing a smart contract for uh, automobile industry. So uh, the and it was again an insurance scenario where uh, let's say we penalize driver. Let's say I met with an accident few days ago, and then the police and insurance started asking and asking my credibility that okay you are not a good driver, but in my uh, five lakh kilometer of driving, I think that is one or two scenarios where I have actually sort of gone into that zone. But I am not rewarded for my four lakh eighty thousand kilometers of driving. So what we did was we started finding ways to reward good drivers and reward uh, the good drivers over a period of time. So the use of IoT and blockchain allowed us to uh, build that credibility over a period of time and build a solution where an insurance can be underwritten on, on those scenario basis automatically by the machines. So it was, of course, ahead of its time and very interesting uh, uh, learning from the proof of concept. But it's quite clear that as and when the Teslas of the world will start to uh, take the mainstream, the automated smart contract written by these machines is exactly going to drive a lot of conversations forward. So the world ahead is, is a very interesting world. So blockchain allow uh, to establish a trusted network among IoT devices and any manipulation done on the data or on the device is also, no also notified to the respective authorities uh, using and leveraging blockchain. So blockchain is that sort of a uh, model which allow to establish trust among uh, non-trusted network as well. So it is a great idea. And I think we can bring those stories uh, uh, and talk about them in detail uh, on case-to-case -case basis. Wonderful. I think it's very interesting. And yeah. I think we should do a session sometimes. Maybe we'll request Riti that. And a lot of my uh, students will be interested to at least understand the use case. Like Correct. I think Uma Shankar just said, a yeah. lot of us are not technical in nature, but we are right. going to be in the business domain and thinking of business ideas and also this use cases help. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. I think, thank, absolutely. Very interesting. And, and I think it's more important for people with the business understanding to understand use case because it is not database. It is not glorified data storage and understanding that bit yeah. is very, very important. Thanks, Amitesh. Thanks. Thank you. Amitesh, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, KK. K K K K yeah yes, yeah and coming on video, uh, yes, how do you think this is helpful in HR, human relation? Because yes, most of the organization HR 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 okay yeah because uh, when we want to promote somebody or when we want to demote somebody when we want to counsel somebody you know the employee track or the to map the complete career path, uh, how does it help a HR in an organization? Because it's a very big very very, very big department in any industry. How do you think blockchain can help? That's a great question, KK. And I think that's a question we asked ourselves in 2012. And uh, we did not find an answer for about five years. And we sort of, we think we have a solution starting 2018 onwards and thanks to blockchain. So one of the things that has happened, I mean, between 2011 and 2022, I mean, there was a first ever acquisition done by Microsoft for a billion dollar in 2010 and it was a product called yammer and then there's another game changing trend was a facebook acquisition of instagram which was another billion dollar acquisition which was about 10 or 11 employees so one of the premise of hr or hr based firms prior to 2010 was an idea because i have been into business since 2006 and one of the ways we sort of build business plan that okay we need 100 people and we tag revenue to 100 people and we scale the business so it was a people driven approach that we always took and either the cost structure or the fundamentals or policy was all around that. And of course, uh, attrition and everything related to performance appraisal and scaling and upscaling and be ready to the changing market is, is, is all, all there. 
in my opinion uh, the the next decade is a very contemporary decade and it's a decade of values so even for hr driven organization and hr organization need to understand that who's the workforce who's actually going to come into their scenario and this workforce i mean so typically anyone who's born after 2002 is a qualified workforce as of today so which means that we need to start building our organizations and start readying them for this interesting workforce who were born after 2002 and there's a reason why the great resignation is trending at the first place so what we need to do is we have to understand the nuances of achieving a goal together as a team and the definition of team is moving on from the cohesive in-house team to a diversified team in a real sense i mean there are teams now who could be full-time part-time contract gig or maybe engaged elsewhere and and many other things so one of the reason we have always looked out building in-house team and getting them to sign an employment contract was to secure the, the intellectual property and to simplify the labor laws and procedures over a period of time. That is one of the core fundamental. Because as a customer, you can, you, you, as, a, as a vendor, you cannot go to a customer and say, you know what, my one employee and every and all other 10 employees are gig people. So, I mean, and, and your code is actually shared among 11 people. But please trust us, your code is not going anywhere. It was so hard to achieve as a vision in 2010 and 2012. But thankfully, in the world of 2022, it is very, very easily achievable. So blockchain offers you that possibility of actually expanding your talent base across the traditional approach of acquiring talent and actually doing and finding contemporary ways of achieving. And Flowcard is a classic example, KK. I mean, we are a very small team. And in fact, I don't know, I think we are about five or six full timers. That's it. And I, I, I don't think we, even we are five or six, but we engage about more to 50 odd people at the same time. And what's interesting when we work with our customers, we also sort of disclose everything in the process and all of it is secure in a very, very transparent way. So the accountability is achieved through transparency. So if you could uh, establish uh, transparency in a very sustainable way in an organization, protecting your business interest, the accountability can be driven. And most of the HR fundamentals are brained around this accountability models actually. So which is why Accenture has let go performance appraisal process, because if performance appraisal is making somebody accountable, it works. But if it is not, or there are more motivations to make it work, I mean, something else can happen. So the future, in my opinion, is very, very different, which is where we are doing a talent management in a very contemporary way and trying to find interest of people and get like-minded people aligned and achieve something together. Uh, making others win in the process is important. So what we have coined is called as a win-win-win model, which means that it should be winning for our customers, it should be winning for us, and it should be winning, sorry, it should be winning for our people. They can be an employee, not employee, and therefore it has to be winning for an organization. So organization come last in the equation, and that's the sort of a change. Otherwise, we have always been an employee thinking that we have to do best for our business and organization, and therefore we have to do best. So you have changed the equation and trying to bootstrap, and it, it's quite it's working nice nicely for us as of now. Uh, how does this start, Amit? Does it start from the management level or from the ground level? So it starts from the fact that uh, you you have to be super mindful of the fact that you don't you can't be rich. You have to make your employees rich. So it starts from the management. But sadly, when we all start a business, we all want to make money, and uh, you have to first. I mean, so I'm sorry to digress a bit, but. There's a very simple value proposition that we have and, and it's understanding the value of money. So there are two philosophies in my opinion. One, wherein you keep creating value, keep exchanging value and money is an end of it. Okay, because let's say I offer you an advice and it worked for you. You offered me an advice, it worked for me and, and we were good friends and we were exchanging values. But then, then a time came, I gave you an advice and you make a billion dollars. But you offered me an advice and I made a million dollar. And then the differences start to come, right? And then you say, hey, Mitesh, I've not been kind to you. Your advice gave me billions, but my advice only gave you millions. So why don't you take million and million dollar rupee to qualify and quantify? So money is always that end of the value chain. Okay, that's one, one part of it. The second part is money is also a creator of value. So if you go into the economies like the US where or the venture back funds, what you do is you put a hell lot of money to begin with. And then you say that we have to multiply from X to 10 X. And how does that happen? It happens because the underlying value starts to multiply. And then you create structures and system to manage it from X to 10 X. And, and that's also an important bit as well. So because then it can allow you to scale massively with the predictability assigned to it. So in, in our management philosophy, we find a balance. So it starts with a value association. 
and then you put in money because as and when you start to create enough value and exchanging values is where you'll have enough money already to actually propagate and scale it at as fast as level as possible. So finding that balance is key. So I think it comes from the management philosophies and based on the transformation of organization that you want to build yourself in. And again, I mean, if you want to be that uh, that guy who, who wants to own a, a spacecraft in Mars and have a yacht, I mean, then you have the entire world open for you. <laughs> I mean, but if you're someone who wants to have a, a satisfied, peaceful life, the choice is yours. It's again, the individual preferences, in my opinion, take it. So, but uh, Amit, sorry, I mean, uh, for one more question to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Not a question, but a clarification. How do you really propagate this or percolate this message uh, among the people? You know, now you have, today you have got a class. Do you yeah. do you have any other channel where you know so, people are attracting? Yeah. Yeah. So one that's that's an interesting question, KK. So I think recognition is a part of a human need, is what I believe in. So typically you want to propagate these values. So I think the, the best way to do that is live those values and start to build it. And when the time comes, people will get to know about it. So what we do is specifically, I have bootstrapped a community of entrepreneurs in Jharkhand. That's about 3,500 odd strong people now. And it started afresh from three or four people. Similarly with Sky Cast, that we are trying to do is, is a very, very fundamental uh, process that we are trying to do. Uh, and, and we have found ways to sustain those efforts. I mean, what is important is to sustain all that effort and not to be qualified as a charity because it's also important to monetize the whole aspect of it. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I think propagation is not oh, yeah, your function. Yeah. Propagation is, yeah. is a function of perception. I guess I wanted you to know how, how does this message reach each and every individual? Yeah, no, and I'm no Modi KK, <laughs> and I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about community only, and that's exactly what Amitesh is saying, right? That if you can build that community, the value gets propagated, and then people right. start to recognize. It. And that's exactly. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go on MLM, but yeah. no, no, no. What I mean to say, nothing else. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, uh, KK. Thank you so much, Amitesh, for answering. Uh, clarifying uh, you know, his thought. So thank you, Anshu. Thank you, Uma Shankar, for throwing uh, interesting questions to Amitesh. So do we have any more questions uh, from Abhijit? Uh, I can see now. So uh, Devan, Pratipa, Abhishek. If not, well, let's wind up and uh, let's meet uh, on Wednesday, 7 o'clock, bang on, for another exciting and more wisdom sessions. So, any last word before we wind up, Amitesh? Oh, thank you, Lohit. And I think it was an interesting session to begin with. Learning event is a new concept and it takes some time to propagate. So, it's fine. We, and, and rightly said, we just need to stay stick to the discipline and get things moving and we'll get there. One day at a time, one event at a time.